What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec, and in this video we're taking a look at Shadow Socks. So the reason why this is so cool requires a little bit of story time. So not too long ago, one of my friends spent a year working in China, and as a lot of you know, China has the Great Firewall of China, which not only does it censor the internet, it also blocks a lot of protocols which would allow you to bypass it. So for example, OpenVPN traffic is blocked, and like we tried using private internet access, we tried using a whole bunch of different providers and they were all blocked. And the reason for this is, well, from what I've been reading, is they actually use deep packet inspection on the Great Firewall of China, which essentially means they can actually differentiate between different per protocols. And even if you use OpenVPN in SSL mode, so you set it up to be an SSL VPN, apparently, according to what I've been reading, the actual handshake used is unique and does not exist within regular HTTPS traffic, so it's really easy to identify. So Shadow Socks is what we ended up using, and it's really simple to set up actually, but the difference between this and a regular VPN is this looks identical to HTTPS traffic or just regular SSL traffic, so it's totally, like, it can't be differentiated between this and regular internet browsing. And that being said, it's all encrypted and you even set an encryption password in your own encryption um, type to use. So it's totally secure. And uh, this is the site here. And it's kind of weird because uh, the GitHub page has actually been shut down. And I think it's because it was actually developed in China where these types of tools are actually illegal to even develop and use. So, you know, if you are actually going there, just keep that in mind that this is technically illegal to use over there. So... We're going to set up a VPS, and we do need a VPS in whatever country you're trying to uh, get back to, essentially. So I'm going to be setting up a DigitalOcean droplet in the UK here for this one. So I'm going to set that up now, and we'll be back once I've put it into it, SSH'd into it, and then I'll show you how easy it is to go ahead and configure this. So I've just gone ahead and in created a new droplet here, and I've named it Shadow Socks, and if you see any IP addresses here, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be destroying this once I'm finished with it, so don't worry about any of that. So first we're going to do the standard thing you should always do when you create a new machine, and that's update and upgrade. So I'm doing apt update to update all the repositories. And then I'm going to do apt upgrade to make sure we're running the latest software possible. So now that we've finished upgrading all of our packages, we need to install a couple of packages. So I'm going to do apt install shadow socks and screen. So Shadow Socks is the software we're interested in and uh, I think it said yeah, we've already got the latest version of screen so that's cool. We're just going to be using screen so we can continue running the server in the background once we disconnect from SSH. So let's type screen to help open a new screen session and then what we can type is SS server so if we do double tab we can see SS server and these are the options. So we need to set the uh, method. So I'm going to go for the default, which is 256 CFB, and the password, which I'm going to say is testing1234, uh, the server port 8388, and the server address, which uh, I'm just going to have to quickly grab from elsewhere. And that's it. As soon as I hit enter here, Shadow Socks, as a, the server element, is now running. So now we need a client to go ahead and connect to this. So I'm going to show you both the Android client and the Windows client. So to get a hold of the Windows client, if you go to downloads and then clients on the website on Windows, and you can just grab either one of these. I'm actually using the Qt5 one just because the interface is a bit nicer. That's pretty much the only difference. So I've got that set up here and I'm going to create a new connection manually. So we're going to ask for an unnamed profile. So I'm going to say UK Shadow Socks. Let's go ask us for the server address, which is the same IP address that which we uh, set here. And the password, which is testing1234. And then we need to set the same encryption method. So it's that AES256 CFB. So we'll hit OK and then connect. We can see we've got an active connection here. So this isn't a VPN on Windows, it's just a proxy. So what we need to do, I'm going to drag a Firefox browser over here, just because I like Foxy Proxy. So that's still connected. And uh, I've got Foxy Proxy installed here, so we can have multiple pro proxies and switch between them. So I'm going to add a new proxy. 
and the IP address is 127.0.0.1, so we're connecting to localhost. And the port, I will just go ahead and double check behind here. If we edit, you can see that the local port is 1080, and it's a SOX proxy. Uh, let's leave that open just so we can make sure we are still connected. Uh, and it's 1080. Ooh, 1080. And yes, it's a SOX proxy, and we don't require authentication. So we can hit OK and close. And now if we go ahead and activate that, we should be able to go to my ip.is and we can see we've got the same IP address as the server. And this is how simple it is to set up. So I'm going to switch over to my phone now and we're going to go ahead and show you the Android client, which actually acts as like a full VPN. So all of your traffic is forwarded over it. So you can see my phone screen now, and uh, I have already installed the Shadow Socks app, which you can just go ahead and get from uh, the Google Play Store. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a Apple version available. There may well be. I'm not sure if there is an iPhone version, but you can go ahead and check that for yourself. And in the top right, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Manual Settings, Add Manual Settings. So we need to set an IP address. So it's going to be the same one that we used in the previous uh, example. So it's 46... 101-59-35 and uh, the remote port is set, the local port is set, we need to set the password which is testing1234 obviously if you're doing this for real set a much more secure password than that and then save and then what we can go ahead and do is connect and it's saying that we're connected and we can see that there's traffic going back and forth so if I open my browser and uh, go to myip.is, we can see here that the IP address is the same as the server. So we've set that up, and if we disconnect from the SSH session that we have running, it should continue working just fine. So that's it for this video. I know it's been kind of short, but this is just a really good tip for anyone who may be going to China, because we ran this for an entire year, and it worked flawlessly the entire time. And the performance over Shadow Sox is just amazing. Um, it's just, yeah, it's pretty much unrivaled really. He, he was able to stream things on BBC iPlayer like he was in the country. It was completely, it worked completely perfectly really. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, any other suggestions for like bypassing Chinese censorship or anything like that? I find it really interesting, like the whole concept of the way they do it, I find really interesting. So anyone who has any extra information, either leave that in a comment or come over to the Discord and we can have a chat about it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.